i am recording this session yeah so yesterday we have discussed about the couple of inter equations in the today discussion already ajam is shared couple of inter equations once again in the whatsapp those things we can discuss additionally uh, as per my personal experience personal note uh, so whoever is attended the interviews uh, so they used to discuss with me whenever they are going to attend the interviews or already whenever they attended the interviews okay so that one we can discuss in the today total overall meeting so first thing is uh, we will start with from networking concepts so networking concepts main thing is uh, voice layers they will ask so either you can explain this particular voice layers from top to bottom approach or bottom to top approach but when are explaining this particular process you have to say to the interviewer either you are explaining from top to bottom or bottom to top that's what you have to give the clue as well otherwise he will not understand so whether you're saying from top to bottom or bottom to top example maybe if the interviewer will ask explain about voice layers so what is the answer i will give so voice layers are seven i will explain from top to bottom or else i will explain from okay bottom to top so that is the way how you have to answer so in voice layers we can make more than 1000 1000 inter equations so each and every layer what is the layer number layer name and what is the description or feature of the respective layer and also what are the protocols are there in the each and every layer even attacks also each and every layer attacks also they will ask in the interview point of view and the most popular inter equation as per my experience as my personal note as i said so what are the voice layers are there explain in brief or maybe encryption will come under which layer this is one of the popular inter equation so encryption will come under which layer presentation presentation, presentation layer. layer yes presentation layer that is one of the popular inter equation and also they will ask like what is the tcp three way handshake and also which layer it will come that is one of the popular inter equation so which layer it will come tcp three way handshake transport, transport, layer. Layer. transport relation transport, transport layer. layer yes in transport layer once again they can expect so how the tcp three way handshake will work in between client and server or peer to peer or client and application or client and database or client to client how the tcp three way handshake will work take one of the example related to any application or server then you can explain so always it's better to go and explain practical scenario instead of theoretical by hatting something so maybe if they will ask me what is a tcp three way handshake i will say so example if i will open the hdfcnetbanking.com in that scenario i am a client back end is hdfc bank server so first initiate i will i will initiate the connection as a synchronization request and hdfc net banking server will respond back as a synchronization plus acknowledgement and once whatever request or response i received from the server i will acknowledge so total this is happening in three steps that's why this is called tcp three way handshake so practically you have to explain to the interviewer so he will feel happy instead of by hurting sync plus sync plus acknowledgement and acknowledgement is it clear or not yes, clear sir yes, yes yeah. sir clear. so next one is the tcp and udp differences they will expect more so what is tcp and what is udp and also what are the differences between these two it's one of the popular entry question tcp is a transmission control protocol and udp is a user datagram protocol both these protocols will fall under transport layer okay so second difference is it's a connection oriented tcp udp is a connection less oriented protocol so tcp will use acknowledgement but udp will not use acknowledgement or feedback tcp is a slower but udp is a faster 
So example of TCP, it will use a segments. UDP will use the datagrams. Okay. So finally, example of the TCP is any connection it is establishing to the websites or server or database and so on. UDP side is a Netflix or online videos or online streaming and so on or Skype video calls as well. So that is the difference between TCP and UDP. And one more popular entire question in the YSA layers, ARP. What is ARP, guys? Address resolution protocol. So what it will do? It will convert, the convert layer, layer three layer. address to layer two matrix. Yes. It is one of the popular entire question, that one also. So ARP, what is ARP protocol? Explain about ARP. So otherwise, they will call it ARP. ARP means ARP. In the similar way, reverse ARP, RARP. So this is one of the popular entity question. And one more very popular question normally we can expect from voice layers is, uh, when you're browsing a google.com, what is the backend process? This is, I said several times in the class. Voice this I one, know. yes. This one we can answer in three ways. So in case if the interview will ask, I will explain this scenario in three ways. One is voice layer approach. Second one is a DNS resolutions. Mm -hmm. Third one is SSL TLS mutual authentication mechanism. But most popular one, interval will expect from 95% of the cases, voice layer approach only. All those seven layers we have to apply from application to till physical layer. Okay. So it is also one of the popular entire question especially HSBC, Salesforce, and also Microsoft, uh, even Deloitte, these companies will expect these type of questions. So this is a practical scenario based question, right? Most of the people is not aware of this one. That's why. So next one is router will come under which layer, switch will come under which layer. So that is also one of the popular. So what is the answer guys? Router, yeah, router, router, router. Layer yes, router is a layer three device. It's fall, fall under network lay, network layer, and the switch will fall under data link layer. That is another but layer number two. Okay, so these are all about voice layers. One more question, very 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 popular. Most of the interviews, if you're going for ten interviews, maybe seven to six interviews, we can expect this question. What is the difference between encryption and hashing? It's a very popular entry question. What is the answer, guys? Encryption, encryption is a two-way function. Hashing is one one-way function. Encryption gives the uh, confidentiality, and uh, hashing gives the integrity. Encryption yes. is a... So you have to explain about the even. Yeah, that's perfect answer. Encryption is a two-way function mathematically. Reversing is not possible. Sorry, reverse is possible. Uh, opposite to encryption is a decryption. But on the other hand, so hashing is a completely one-way function. Reverse is not possible. Reversing of the hashing is not possible. So it's a only one-way function. Okay. And also you can provide the definition as well. So encryption, the process of converting plain text data into encrypted data using some of the algorithm as well as using some of the key or password that is called encryption and the digital representation of the file or digital representation of the characters or numbers of the file is called as a hashing. So that is the way how you have to answer. It's one of the very, 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 very popular entry question. Okay. So these are all the questions we can expect from the, okay. So OSA layer approach, most of the cases. So if I'm moving from voice layers to the second one is uh, IP address classification. Most of the cases they will expect private IP address range. So one 10 dot series, 192.168 series, and also 172.16 series. All these three are belongs to private IP address range. Other than these three, everything is a public IP address range. It is also one of the popular. Additionally, along with this one, they will ask, what are the classes of IP address? Combination of both public as well as a private. 
class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E, along with that particular range as well. Okay. This is about overall classification of the IP address. Next one is a ports and protocols, especially open ports and closed ports. They will ask if you're going for network engineer vacancy. Okay. So like a network routing and switching or CCNA, CCNP related vacancies, they'll expect about uh, what is the difference between open ports and closed ports, which ports are better. So that is one of the popular entire question. But we are dedicated to security, right? So most of the cases, they'll expect port numbers. Each and every port number we have to remember. So most of the cases, they'll expect SSL, HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, then RDP, SMTP, SNMP, NTP. NTP is also very popular. NTP. Uh, so these are all very popular entry questions. Okay. So you should know about the each and every protocol importance along with port number as well. It's not about only security people. These questions they will ask. Even if you are a part of Windows supporting team, like a Windows admin, or even if you are a part of Linux supporting team, they will ask these type of questions. Not only to security team. So if you are going for Windows system vacancy, if you are going for Linux system vacancy, they will ask all these port numbers. So that is very, very popular entity question in the entire networking. As compared to voice layers, ports and protocols are very important, even SMB as well. So server message block port number 445. So through this one, one I mean, uh, ransomware attack will occur. So that's why NTP, SMB, HTTP, SSL, SSH, FTP, SFTP, SMTP, SNMP. So these are all popular in the question. Okay. So that is about oral ports and protocol side. If you are moving to the next topic, then it will come like a DNS. So in DNS side, what is DNS? What are the DNS type of attacks will come? For DNS, what are the different types of attack will come? We know already DNS pooping attack or DNS amplification attack or DNS poisoning attack. It's one of the popular attack on the DNS side. So DNS records, we will not expect that much. Why? Because it's a network admin guy. Normally will take care of the DNS records configuration. But if you are going for routers, which load balancer, firewall vacancy, yes, we can expect even DNS records as well. Okay. So I think uh, last year, SBI, uh, State Bank of India, is conducted one of the I mean, they recruited more than 200 cyber security analysts. Uh, only in DNS record itself, they asked four DNS records. One is A record, second one is statement, I mean, state of authority record, SOA, and next one C name record, next one is NS record. So these are all the four different types of records uh, they asked in the SBI written test. Okay. So that is about overall DNS. Uh, next one is a DHCP. Uh, if DHCP topic will come in the entry point of view, a very popular entry question is a DORA process. Okay. So discovery of a request acknowledgement. It's one of the very popular entry question about DORA process. If DHCP related entry questions. Uh, then we are moving to the other servers. Then we can expect one of the very popular entry question what is the difference between Active Directory and Domain Controller? Okay, so Active Directory is a directory of the all the systems or servers or computers or desktops or MacBooks or workstations and so on. But on the other hand, Domain Controller is a service. On top of this one, it is running of the Active Directory. Additionally, it is a centralized authentication and authorization server. Okay, so once again, they will expect a couple of event ID numbers if domain controller will come into picture. One is event ID number 4625, nothing but authentication failures. Event ID 4624, that one is belongs to failure authentication. Additionally, 
Windows logon types as well. We discussed, I think, day before yesterday, those uh, type one, type two, type three, type four, type five, type seven, six is not existing. Type eight, type nine, type 10, type 11, type 12. So these are all things you have to remember, reactive, sorry, interactive, uh, remote desktop, and also clear text batch service, okay, uh, remote cache. So these are all the different types of Windows logon types you have to remember. One more question we can expect from this type of entire question related to event ID. Uh, that is nothing but if you want to see 24 from past 24 hours of the uh, login failure attempts, what will you do? I'm repeating once again. If you want to see in SIM tool authentication failure attempts from past 24 hours, how can you identify this information? <laughs> What is the answer, guys? Event ID number. Uh, go into SIM tool and uh, in that log activity, you have to search for event ID 4625. Perfect. So we have to go to the log activity tab and we have to go to the advanced H tab and we have to give the event ID equal to 4625. Then automatically from past 24 hours of the time period, whoever, whoever has done authentication login failure attempts, automatically it will appear. That is the answer you have to provide. So this is not only the Indian panel, they asked in the interview, even I think uh, USA as well as Middle East, even European people also, they asked about this particular interview question. Okay, in the client round. So additionally, in the other servers, uh, we can expect what is database server, what is application server, okay. So that is about overall server side. If are moving to other topic, network architecture diagram, we can expect so many questions from this particular topic. Always, you have to remember network architecture, network architecture diagram in your mind. So even they were sleeping midnight at 12 o'clock, I'm waking up and I'm asking what is network architecture diagram, you have to say the answer. So we have three different types of zones are there in the network architecture diagram, starting with internal or trust zone. Second one, DMZ or DMZ. So third one is untrust or public or internet. Yeah, so these are the three different types of zones. In these three zones also, very popular entire question is what is DMZ or DMZ? What is the answer? DMZ or DMZ? What is DMZ? Yes. It words come from military. Yes. So that is not sufficient when you're explaining in the interview point of view. DMZ full form is a demilitarized zone. Okay. This is also called as a DMZ or DMZ. Okay. So this one, this word came from military. It will act as a boundary between untrusted trusted network or trusted zone. That is the answer you have to provide. It will, it will act as intermediate or gateway or a broker between yes. untrusted to trusted zone. So most of the cases, non-critical applications, non-critical servers, web application firewalls, firewalls, email gateways, we can deploy in the DMZ or DMZ zone. Is it clear? It's a very popular interview question. And also one more question, I think for State Bank of India written test, whatever they asked in the respective cybersecurity analyst vacancy. In this network architecture diagram itself, I think three or four questions came once again. One is a DMZ. What is the full form of DMZ or DMZ? Second one is as per Cisco terminology, what is a trusted score? As per Cisco terminology, what is untrusted score? As per Cisco terminology, what is DMZ score? Zero. 100, 100, zero. Yes. 100, zero, and 50, 50. Okay. Why I'm saying State Bank of India? Because I have written this exam. I'm the, I, I'm not, it's not a self dubba because I want to explain about myself. I applied, applied for DZM. Uh, it's, a, I mean, higher role. Uh, so that time, even uh, only for, uh, there is no actually logical reasoning. 
as well as aptitude and written, I mean, even English communication skills as well. Only they conducted completely technical skills. So all are India. So around, uh, I think 5,000 uh, people, they have written the exam. I'm, I'm all India's top second rank. So that's why I'm saying about all these inter questions. Otherwise, how I know whether what is State Bank of India asked about the questions about these particular vacancies? Okay, so that is about uh, uh, network architecture diagram. So once again, under DMZ, I mean, internal server side also, you have to remember. Always, as I said, you have to re keep remember where firewall can be deployed. It's a very popular entry question. Where proxy server can be deployed? Where NADS, NAPS can be deployed? What is the answer you will provide? In two ways we can give, sir. From, uh, from external to internal or from internal to external. Okay. Okay, if we come from the external to internal, uh, mm -hmm. to ISP, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in the, before before the, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, DMZ zone, we will be installing a firewall. Before and, ISP router, you have to say, not DMZ, before mm -hmm. ISP router, yeah. After the in, uh, firewall, we will be installing a, a proxy, and after that, uh, we will be installing NI, NIDS, NIPS. After yes. That, yeah, so this answer, what are Kapoor said, perfectly excellent answer. This answer we can say from internal to external, that is nothing but traffic is going from inbound to outbound. In this similar way, this answer also we can explain from outbound to inbound. Both the answers we can provide. So if it is inbound to outbound, firewall can be deployed after proxy. So if the traffic is coming from external to internal, we can deploy IS behind ISP router. Because we are not sure what is interviewer is expecting, whether he's expecting from internal to external or external to internal. And also each and every device design, architecture diagram, what are the detection methods we have to remember. So example, endpoint security. So server plus client agent method approach we will deploy. So antivirus agent, we have to deploy on the every end user machine. And also we have to configure the policies on the antivirus or EDR server side. Whenever any abnormal related to malware category of the attacks, this agent will communicate to the antivirus or EDR server based on the signature based detection mechanism or behavioral pattern, as well as machine learning capability or heuristic approach our baseline method alerts will be generated in the EDR or antivirus tool. Okay, so whenever alerts will be generated as an EDR analyst, L1, L2, L3 team will take care of the instant investigation. That is the architecture diagram and also deployment as well as implementation and coming back to the licensing option based on how many number of endpoints are there in the organization level including servers as well. Why? Because endpoint security even we can provide to servers also. So laptop, MacBook, workstation, desktop, all these servers, including all these endpoints. Example consider maybe total number of endpoints are 10,000. In that scenario, we have to purchase antivirus or EDR license for 10,000 endpoints. Okay. Even I provided EDR roles and responsibilities. So yesterday, one of the interview question, one of the student is attended interview. So why antivirus agent is sleeping? So whether EDR or antivirus team is not informing to cybersecurity SOC operations team, what the answer guys? Last night, one of the student is attended interview. So he explained about ransomware attack. So he explained very well, that's fine. But after that particular incident investigation, she or he asked about why the server is got compromised. Don't use antivirus EDR tool in your organization level. So what's the answer you will say? The antivirus may not be in active mode. So why antivirus agent is not in active mode? Maybe system is not shut down, sir. 
and the system so is whether not anti virus in your team is not informing to you whether anti virus cdr team is not informing why it is inactive state to the cyber security sock of resistance team irregular patch patch updates were not there yeah so that is what whether anti virus cdr team is not informing to cyber security sock of resistance team why it is not in active state maybe employee keep it in sleeping mode it is sleeping mode that's why i'm asking why it is in sleeping mode what edr team is doing so yes someone said irregular patch updates so we will educate the end user but end user maybe will not shut down the system they will keep in sleep mode even myself also sorry to say this one whenever my i i used to work from 9 to 6 pm ist okay so couple of times my even meetings will be there i will extend to 8 or 9 so once that particular time is over related to office i will shut i will not shut down just i will sleep i'll put in sleep mode even security person itself is not is acting as abnormal what about normal people so what is the answer for this one yes i will agree with you because we have to convince the interviewer i will agree with you on this one edr roles and responsibilities yes regularly they have to identify what are the agents are sleeping but unfortunately because of the regular patch updates and also they are not rebooting the server for more than one year that is the reason antivirus agent is sleeping and also whatever incident is got compromised that day unfortunately edr team is not responded to sock operations team stating that antivirus agent is sleeping so that's why respect to system is got compromised it's not about technical how you are managing with the respect to spontaneous answer how you are thinking logically even though you know the answer but with spontaneous you have to give the answer and always you have to convince the interviewer don't say i don't know something yeah couple of times you should be honest i will agree with you completely you don't know the answer yes you can say i don't know even i will say i don't know if i don't know something it's not wrong you are expecting something but don't say blah 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 and so on okay at least if you know partially the answer yes you can give convincing i will agree with you that means okay i'm okay with you i will i'm 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 whatever you are saying i will okay with you i'm agreeing with you whatever you said that's correct it's not wrong okay that is about antivirus edr related so what are the different types of edr alerts we will see so edr alerts we will see related to all the malware category of the attacks like a trojan or worm or virus or ransomware botnet logic bomb zero day adware spyware keylogger okay so these are all the different types what is mimi catch what is mimi catch what is mimi catch m i m i k a t z it is a type of uh, malware okay which replicates itself in the windows yes it is applicable to dedicated to windows operating system attacker will install the mimi catch software into the attack i mean indigo mission then finally he will gain the so credential stealing or credential scrapping or unauthorized access or stealing of the data that is called mimi catch okay so that is about edr tool one of the scenario i will ask now one of the system is got compromised by trolls in website in edr tool what will you do one of the system is got compromised by trolls in website in edr tool what will you do what is the answer what is the answer sir did not teach in the class 
So we will block the URL of that uh, website. So always, that's what I said, guys. You should know about each and every attack you are able to understand. Then you can give the answer. So in this scenario, what you have to say, Trojan website maybe end user is downloaded. So I think. So if the end user is downloaded the file, okay. So from Trojan website, I will identify the what is the end user system name, what is the IP address, what the computer name. I will take the IP address or device name or host name or computer name. Then I will go to ADR tool. Already clearly he mentioned ADR tool. It's not about SIM tool. I will take the IP address and I will go to the ADR tool. I'll click on devices tab. Then I'll paste the IP address or host name or computer name. Then I can go and I can see what is the OS version, what is the host name or computer name, where it is located, what is the recent activity related to file download and what is the status of the file, whether it's a quarantine or allow or clean or alert or block. If it is allow, I can sus I can treat this one as a pulse positive. If it is a block, I can suspect this one as a pulse positive. If it is quarantined and alert, then I will go and I will do the sandboxing analysis or I will take the file from the end user machine. Then I will go to the virusshuttle.com and I will see the what is the verdict of the file as per the signature based detection mechanism. Based on the analysis, whatever I have done, if it is infected file, then I will take the hash value. I'll go to the ADR tool. I'll block the respective hash value in the ADR tool under administration or general settings. And also additionally, I will identify the file name from the EDR. I will go and I will download the file from the respective end user machine. And also I will rerun the antivirus scans. If it is server, then I will take the different approach. I will take care of the containment, eradication, mitigation, and selection land. This is the way how you have to explain. This is last night inter equation. Okay, so that is about overall EDR. So EDR tools wise, what are the regular alerts we will see? We will see virus got detected, end user system is got compromised malware, one of the system is got compromised ransomware, one of the system is got compromised by so warm and so on. That is about EDR alerts notification. So power cell executions malware, do you know about this one? Power cell execution malware. Do you have any idea on this one? No, no, sir. Yeah, so you can say I don't know because I did not work on the recent. I worked on the activity related to PowerShell, but power that is a pulse positive instant. When the user is script, when the user is running the scripts related to PowerShell, so our antivirus tool is blocked. But unfortunately, I did not work on the True positive scenarios. You are expect you are accepting your honesty. Okay. So power cell execution, it is there part of threat prevention mechanism, one of the policy configuration. So we can configure the different types of policies in the EDR tool. One is threat prevention, one is DLP, one is file integrity monitoring, one is HDS HAPS account lockout policy, update management, web control and application control. Hope everybody remember so far CDR tool. So that is on the dedicated to endpoint security tools in the network architecture diagram. Coming back in the network security side, we have network IDS, network IPS, firewall and proxy. Each and every tool you should understand. Network IDS and network IPS. Network IDS design or implementation. Okay, span or mirror method. NIPS, inline method or promise cus mode. Proxy, inline method. Firewall. What is the firewall deployment option? 
there will be different methods sir there what are the be, different methods uh, layer 3 approach layer 2 approach okay span and uh, mirror method okay uh, so in the firewall, yes, we can deploy in the different methods. So first method name is called layer three method or root method or NAT method. So most of the organization for internet facing or perimeter firewall, we can deploy as a layer three or root mode. Why? Because internet should be required as a router and also VPN if it is needed. So we have to always require layer three mode because router is a part of layer three. Second mode is a switch mode. In case if you want to monitor internal traffic related to inbound as well as outbound, we will use a switch mode or layer two mode. So next one is high availability method or high availability mode. In case water by default high availability interfaces are not using two of the interfaces we will configure as high availability mode as well. So fourth method is virtual or transparent. This is not recommended one because firewall will act as a dummy device. Water traffic is coming, it will traffic will go outside. So last method is That's span or Mirror, mirror method. method. So for testing of the firewalls, we will use this proof of concept purpose span or mirror method. One of the interface of the firewall, we will connect it to. So span or mirror interface of the switch or router, whatever it is configured by the network engineers. These are the five methods part of firewall deployment or options. Coming back on the licensing option, almost all these three different types of devices proxy, firewall, even network IDS network is will support same type of things. One is land bandwidth, use a number of end users, maximum number of sessions, maximum number of concurrent sessions. If it's dedicated to firewall, maximum number of VPN session, maximum number of sessions. Maximum number of applications as well. So that is the about licensing option for network security tools like IDS or IPS of the network, proxy and also firewall. As per network architecture diagram, even we have email gateway. So email gateway or email security solution will deploy in DMZ or DMZ zone. Whenever any email is coming from external to internal as an inbound traffic, in that scenario, so what our email is coming from sender, the traffic will come to internet, from internet to ISP router, ISP router to firewall, firewall to email gateway, it will go back to firewall, then will go to proxy, network IDS, network IPS, then core switch, access switch, SMTP server, finally it will reach to the uh, recipient whoever wants to receive the email. That is about email gateway. Do you have any experience on email gateway? What is the answer? Do you have any experience on email gateway? What is the answer? Yes, we have. Yes, I do have the experience on the email gateway. Whatever in job description they are mentioning, other than that, you can say anything. That's fine. Example in the job description or job opportunity, they are mentioning the proof point. If they are asking in the interview point of view, so what is the email gateway experience you have? I have import experience. So normally email phishing alerts will receive through. So respect to email gateway. So we have severity like a critical or high or medium or low. Whenever any phishing email is coming as a spear phishing or whaling and also malicious URL link and also malicious Marvel attachment. In that scenario, as a phishing email analyst, I will take care of the instant investigation. Then interview will ask back. So what are the main important features or parameters are there for every email? Last night, interview question, guys, this one. Without email security solution, how can you do phishing email investigation? What the answer? Without email security solution or without email gateway, how can you do phishing email investigation? With the help of open source tools, sir. 
yeah with the help of open source tool like mx tool or ip wide or virus total.com or hybrid analysis.com water email is received i will go and i'll contact with respect to smtp or exchange or ucs or maybe outlook team and i'll identify how many people are received i will do the domain address validation ip address validation header analyzer validation and also if the email contains the malicious url link so url validation if the email contains the malware attachment malware analysis as well last night interview question this one okay so that is about oral phishing email i already told you so couple of things you have to scenario based they will ask if 100 emails are received only two people are clicked on the malicious url link and only two people are reported you 98 people are not reported to you what will you do what the answer yes, i am repeating the question i am repeating the question once again 100 emails came as a phishing email only one alert like a spear phishing group of users out of 100 users two people are clicked on 98 people are did not click on so two people are who are clicked on they are reported to you but 98 people are did not reported you for cyber security SOC operation investigation what will you do simple abha antivirus antivirus for <coughs> all 90 with the help of smtp server who may how many people they have not uh, what email they got uh, we can we can we can get the information okay that's perfect later later on uh, um, so we will block it on proxy firewall we will direct will block it without doing any investigation we have to do the investigation we will go to the proxy and see that uh, any command and control server is uh, running or not Okay, 98 people are not reported, but what will you do for them? Okay, two people are clicked on, for them we can go and we can do whether any common and control out, outbound connections are going on and so on. What about 98 people actions? Security awareness program should be provided for them. Sorry? Security awareness program. Security Sorry. awareness, okay, by the time you are providing security awareness, whatever incident you will do, whatever incident is received. Because they are not clicked on uh, our corporate IT policy that is regularly will give training to every security person. I mean, uh, other team members like HR team or legal team or admin team or maybe DevOps team or tech ops team or machine learning team and data science team. It's a company policies. Even we'll test the phishing emails attachments as well by sending the wanted link. So, phishing emails to the respective employees and we can see who are all clicked on. But we are not expecting that one. Whoever is not reported 98 people, from them, what will you do? What are the actions you will take care? We will. Because they didn't click on. Wow. So in that scenario, we have to delete the emails from the respect to 98 users who have received. How we can delete those emails from the end user machine, from your laptop? We cannot do it. email gateway. The SMTP server people will do that. Yes, we can contact the SMTP server team in case email gateway is not there and ask them to delete all those emails. In case if you are using Office, Office 365 ATP or Mimecast or ProPoint or Ironport, in that scenario, we have one of the option name is called email purging. P U R G I N G purging. Email purging meaning here. From respect to email gateway, whoever received the email, we can delete from our side. There is no need to contact the end user. That is called email purging. P U R G I N G purging. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So yes. if you have the email gateway access to us, then what are 98 people are not reported to us, then we can go to the email gateway. And we have one of the option name is called email purging. Email purging meaning here, deleting the phishing email from the 98 users at a time. Whoever is received, that email we can delete. That is called email purging. I did not say this one in the phishing email investigation. 
is it clear or not yes sir yes so what are two people are clicked on that's correct what are you said you are right i will go and i will check the proxy logs i will go to yes. next generation firewall logs and is there any outbound connections are going on outbound as a command and control server connections what is the level of the data breach it is happened as per incident life cycle management process i will take care of the root cause analysis document also in the eradication mitigation phase so i will make sure that changing the credentials to the end user system related to outlook or gmail sir after confirming that it is a phishing email only we have to delete sir yes after confirming phishing email you have to delete all this process you are right okay that is about email gateway so coming to in the network arc, so what are we are discussing everything network architecture diagram only so we discussed endpoint security we discussed about network security we discussed about email security one more security is pending so that is called application security nothing but waf what is sql injection attack what is cross site scripting attack these two are very 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 popular entire question you know about what is the definition what is the mitigation steps and what are the log sources logs we can integrate it to sim tool to identify the alert notification possible even you can do the investigations whatever we discussed related to voice top 10 db for yesterday okay so it's one of the very very popular entire question so on the network architecture diagram one more thing is so we have vulnerability assessment what do you know about vulnerability assessment what do you, what do you will say the answer what do you know so as per your cv as per your resume i can see that even you worked on the vulnerability assessment as well what do you know about vulnerability management or assessment what the answer you will give this is the assessment of it gives the weakness of the system sir okay if you, if you scan Uh, the whatever the weaknesses that are there in the system, it will be given. But you are saying generic way, but you are not saying your practical experience. What have you worked on? Yeah, with the help of this, uh, we can scan for ports. Okay, whether the ports are one second. It is generic way. Yeah, as per your CV mentioned already, you have vulnerability assessment experience, but you are not saying in the water experience you have in the resume. you are saying generic way okay understood or not yes sir so what is the answer you have to say yes i will agree with you on this one i worked on one year of experience into dedicated vulnerability assessment for one of the client out of four plus years experience whatever i have so in that particular one year of the time period so i supported one of the north american healthcare project for that particular north american one Uh, north american healthcare project we have more than 12000 servers are there so what i have done based on the business vertical site i divided all those 12000 servers that may be devops list machine learning windows team linux team product development team and application development team after doing the classification of the assets owner and business verticals using cmdb and also contacting the asset owners what i have done so for scanning of these particular assets or vulnerability management i am using nessus tool in my organization so i went and created a scan policy so we are following a monthly scan as a schedule or ad hoc scan i created a scan policy in that scan policy i defined the respective team name and also i provided the hardening benchmark related compliances authenticated username and password after creating a scan policy i created a scan rule in this scan rule i provided scan information and also targeted ip address information and also i clicked on the save button we are scheduling the scans for every month last day of the month so automatically scans will be run and reports will be generated as well as it will come as email notification once that particular alerts will come to me i will download as a pdf format as well as csv format after that whatever 
reports or vulnerabilities is generating in the uh, respect to Excel sheet as well as PDF format, I will do the manual vulnerability analysis. What are I supported that particular customer? We are not following the vendor severity, sorry, tool based severity, what our Nessus tool or Qualys tool is giving. We are following vendor severity. Every vulnerability report contains the CVSS score, CV number, vulnerability name, vulnerability description, when the scan is started, when the scan is vended, what is the net bias information, and so on. So, based on the attack vector, attack complexity, confidentiality, integrity, availability, information disclosure, and also based on the vendor severity, I used to identify what is the vendor severity as per CSS score. After that, I will filter out based on severity like a critical or high or medium or lower informational. I, I will raise this operate ticket with the respective Windows team and Linux team. For critical, I will raise one ticket. For high vulnerabilities, I will raise one ticket. For medium, I will raise one ticket. For low and information, I will raise one ticket. A license to respect to Windows team and Linux team. So once they will take the ticket and they will pick the patch updates in the testing environment, they will come back to me and they will ask whether all the vulnerabilities are fixed or not. As a vulnerability analyst, I will go and I will rerun the scans and will re-verify whether all the vulnerabilities are fixed or not. So based on my confirmation, so respect to business verticals team, so they will raise a change request. They will implement the prod environment of the respective patch updates or patch remediation. In my organization, patch policy we are following as a critical vulnerability fixing 10 working days, high, medium, low, and informational we are fixing in the 30 working days. That is the patch policy in my organization we are following. This is what I know about vulnerability assessment based on my experience, whatever one year I worked on the healthcare project. That is what you have to explain. Is it clear? It's agreed, sir. That is what you have to say. It's not like a generic statement. So I will do this one, I will do that one, and so on. Already you worked on. It's a fast tense. Okay. You have to give practical experience, whatever you did on. Everything okay. I given the notes as well. Same thing explain in sentences wise. That's all. Okay, that is about overall vulnerability assessment. Just now, whatever explained, even this is applicable to vulnerability management vacancies as well. Okay, so that is about overall this one. Do you know any cloud experience? Do you have any cloud experience? What is the answer? Do you have any cloud experience? No. So yes, you can say, yes, I have the basic knowledge in the cloud as well. So as per, I think, uh, Gafur, he asked about, I will take one session, how to answer this particular type of questions. Yes, I do have experience on cloud. I work on Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, as well as a couple of cloud-based SaaS applications like EDR tools, ServiceNow, and also Vokta, and other tools as well. So in the Amazon Web Services, Azure, a SaaS-based application, I used to integrate all those logs to SIM tool, and I used to create the correlation rule, and I used to monitor even cloud services as well. You are not saying that full-fledged you know about cloud security. So whatever cyber security, nothing but for SOC operations, even you will monitor cloud as well. So what I just know I said it's related to how to collect the logs and what we have to do in the same tool. Okay, that is about cloud part. What do you know about Windows and Linux servers? Yesterday we discussed already this one. So as per my knowledge, what your experience I have. So we have more than 5,000 servers are there. All those servers logs we integrated to same tool using collector agent method. So I used to log into respect to Windows servers or Linux servers or middleware servers or Docker and container. I used to specify the source IP, destination IP, port number will vary from vendor to vendor. Example, if it's IBM Curator, IBM Curator 8443, Splunk 9997, Exabim 9093, Mecafe 8443. 
I used to specify this particular information, and I used to go and I used to specify. I, I used to go to the sim tool and I used to see whether all these server logs are reflecting in sim tool or not. In the Windows Server log site, applications, audit, system configuration related logs, I used to verify. In the Linux site, slash where slash log slash star slash where slash log HTTPD slash where slash log SSHD. These type of different types of paths we used to uh, put the respective log integration methods. In case these logs are not reflecting in the same tool, in that scenario, I used to go and I used to take the TCP dumper packet captured from the firewall. I used to analyze in the Wireshark tool. Mm -hmm. Additionally, even I know hardening benchmark related to Windows and Linux server because when I was working on the vulnerability assessment, I used to specify the hardening benchmark compliances as well. This is what I know about the Windows servers and Linux server. That is what you have to say. Water, we discussed everything practically how to explain. That's it. Are you able to understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it clear or not? Clear, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. If you don't know the answer, you can say yes, I don't know. That is the honesty way. Yesterday I attended one of the inter two dedicated to my vacancy related to cloud security architect. I don't know one of the SSA in cloud of Amazon. It's a server side cryptography technology. Unfortunately, I don't know. I said, I don't know the answer. That's all. What's wrong? So nobody will expect. So if they will ask 10 questions, you have to give the 10 answers. It's a wrong myth, a wrong opinion. If you are giving the seven answers correctly, 100% they will shortage for second round of the interview. Okay. So that is about network architecture diagram overall. So cybersecurity SOC operations, I'm not discussing here. So once we'll go to cybersecurity, there we can discuss how they will ask in the SIM tool point of view. So, so far we completed network architecture diagram questions. So coming back on the endpoint security side. So endpoint security side. So if you are L2 and L3, then only you can say, I know about ADR tools. Otherwise, dedicated vacancy or applying for Sentinel-1 or CrowdStrike or Silence or SOFA CDR tool. In that scenario, you can say yes. But couple of times what HR team normally or consultancy team they will do. So please update your resume. Example, you don't know CrowdStrike tool. You know only SOFA CDR tool. But they will, HR will call and they will ask, please update CrowdStrike and you can respond back to me, updated resume. Will you do that one? Will you do that one? Uh, no, sir, we should not do that. Uh, whatever the skills which we have, uh, we should mention in that resume. Yes, you can say that one. So I can handle the technical interview question. It's not about, because HR team does not aware of what is tools and so on. They are not aware of what are the process, back end process. They are not about what is the tools we are working on and back end process and so on. They will ask them to, you can edit and you can send it back. So example, in this scenario, you edit CrowdStrike and you send it to the uh, HR team and the HR team is forward to hiring manager. Hiring manager is reviewed your profile and shortlisted for interview. If you are going for the interview, then they will expect dedicated to CrowdStrike interview questions now. Then they will ask, in CrowdStrike, what are the policies you will configure? What are the different types of actions you will configure under the CrowdStrike? Will you give the answer in this scenario? Because you did not see practically CrowdStrike tool. Keep it as it is. So for CDR, that's fine. You have seen already practically. So then you can, you can explain to the HR team. So if really hiring manager, if they want to see your backend process knowledge or technical knowledge, even though you're working for so for CDR, 100%, they will shortlist your resume. So once you are shortlisted your resume, there you are going for the interview. 
do you have any experience on crowd crowd strike they will ask unfortunately i did not work on the crowd strike but i worked on sofa cdr tool all the tools are same process same technical aspects same back end process same policies we will configure so i i do experience on sofa cdr tool so only console wise it is different if one or two days knowledge transfer or training you are giving to me even i'll work on crowd strike as well but in that scenario you had explained about even crowd strike has a palkan sensor agent and this agent you have to install on the every end user machine and we have to integrate to crowd strike anti virus cdr server and we have to create the policies and so on this is the way how it will work is it clear yes sir yes sir so that is the way how you have to give the answers it's not about okay how many tools you are working on how much knowledge you have that is the matter in the interview point of view even maybe you are selecting for cyber security analyst now maybe we have more than 100 tools you are working for more than 20 years of experience will you expert in all these 50 or 100 tools whatever we have in the market no sir not possible impossible even though if you are doing the retirement also so we don't have that 100 tools experience everybody will expect only back end process how much you are aware of my notes is more than sufficient to crack even edr tools as well firewall also vulnerability assessment proxy waf even basic knowledge on pen test finally cyber security sock operations for 24 bar sock environment along with grc also okay so coming back on the edr side most of the cases what are the regular alerts you will see in the edr tools it's dedicated to edr vacancy you are applying i will see regularly or normally in edr we will receive the alerts related to virus got compromised malware is got compromised one of the endos is accessing the trojan website on a system is got compromised with command and communicating to command and control server and so on so these are all the regular alerts i will see in the edr tool so couple of times you will receive even dlp vacancies as well so dlp licensing also same as it is the dlp detection methods also same as it is only dlp policies are different dlp policies will configure related to pi data related to remote devices and also finally i think social network websites so these are the four or five parameters okay only policies are different in dlp otherwise deployment implementation as well as licensing option even actions everything is same as it is okay that is about dlp vacancies how to answer which tool dlp experience you have so for cdr tool in the sofa cdr tool also we have one of the vacant i mean one of the policies they related to dlp i am not sure how many people are remember this particular chat yes, yes, it is there sir. so we have seen that particular information related to australia pi data european pi data then brazil canada america all these so that is dedicated to edr site alerts deployment actions alerts what we will receive and also as well as implementations as well in the network security side couple of additional exp couple of additional questions they will ask if are going for dedicated to firewall vacancy what is meant by stateful inspection firewall what is stateful inspection firewall what is stateful inspection firewall i did not read my notes 
stateful inspection firewall it's a combination of packet filtering as well as even uh, circuit level gateway also it can provide the state of the packet along with the tcp three way handshake is completed between client and server or peer to peer or client and application it will provide the state of the packet like whether it's synchronization state or synchronous plus acknowledgement state or acknowledgement state that is called stateful inspection what is deep packet inspection What is deep packet inspection in the firewall? Hey guys, I'm asking you only. What is deep packet inspection? Deep packet inspection meaning here, water packet is entering into the inbound traffic as well as outbound traffic. In that scenario, firewall will validate packet. It will open the IP header as well as payload. In the IP header, what is the source IP and where, what is the destination IP, where the packet has to reach. And also it will validate, is there any malicious IP is there from sender to receiver. In the payload, so it's a piece of written code or body of the content of the message, whatever sender is sending to the receiver. Even this payload also, firewall will scan, that is called deep packet inspection. In case any malware or malicious or abnormal or suspicious things are existing in the packet, it will drop or it will reset, it will block or it will alert in the firewall. That is called deep packet inspection. How can you configure the firewall policies? What the answer? What the approach will follow to configure the firewall policies? What approach? Top down approach. Top to bottom or top down approach. That's correct. By default firewall, when you're purchasing, what is by default rule? It will be there. Implicitly deny. Implicitly deny. Implicitly deny. Do you know how to create rule or policies in the firewall? Say the answer. Do you know how to create policies or role in the firewall? Yes, I know the how to create a policies. So example, first they will ask about instant investigation and you are saying something will block IP address in the firewall. But when I'm asking this question now, now you're not able to answer. Then how can you trust? In the instant investigation, you said like, you'll block the IP address in the firewall. But when I'm asking firewall policies, you are not saying any answer. Then how can you trust whether really you worked on the firewall or not? So you know all the source zone, destination zone, source IP, destination IP. Okay, so next one is uh, action, firewall, uh, security profiles. Okay, application, port and protocol. This is the firewall policy configuration. I will log into the firewall. I will go to the policies and objects tab. Then I'll create a policy or rule in the firewall. Okay, then additionally, they will ask, do you know how to integrate firewall logs to SIM tool? Or did you onboard any firewall logs to SIM tool? Yes, I know how to integrate firewall logs to SIM tool. Using syslog server method will integrate using push mechanism. I will log into the firewall. I will specify the, I will go to syslog server option under the settings tab. Then we'll click on the uh, syslog server option. Then we'll specify the SM tool name, SM tool IP address, host name, port number 514, protocol TCP or UDP, and finally log format BSD or XML or CSV and so on. In case logs are not reflecting in the SIM tool, so I will do the troubleshooting as well or debugging. So first, as option one, I will go and I will check the, so what are syslog configuration I have done correctly or not. If that firewall configuration, whatever I have done the correctly is syslog configuration, 
then i'll go to option 2 so nothing but i will do the packet capture from the firewall monitor tab then i'll go to white shark and i'll the i will analyze the, i will analyze the tcp ip layer approach so transport layer internet layer network layer and the network interface layer whether packet is dropped or reset or maybe blocked or retransmission and i'll go and i will analyze do you know how to configure vpn that may be remote vpn or ipsec vpn and also site to site vpn this is one of the popular entry question if i are going for dedicated firewall vacancy okay what the difference between okay so next generation firewall and normal firewall what the difference between palo alto and other networking firewalls what the firewall high deployment option or high availability how can you do firewall upgrade all these questions you can explore on the firewall level is it clear yes sir yeah so that that means so now you can analyze how much you know and how much you have to prepare based on today conversation how much you know and how much you have to prepare then you can analyze based on that particular thing then you can go on to now you can study as i said by heart will not work out always think logically with practical way okay sir okay so sorry uh, that's all for today guys tomorrow morning i will take the class maybe 8 or 8:30 and what are pending topics are there and what are the questions they will ask so far we are discussing based on the initial training to till today i mean initial training to uh, what is the firewall till there we discussed then we can discuss other things as well after completing this topic then whatever existing interview questions in the couple of companies they asked that one also we can discussed ajami shared i think around more than 10 to 15 additional questions those uh, questions true, also we can discuss yeah, which is from dubai location interview yeah. today one okay. of my source uh, i think first abu dhabi back okay great yeah. okay so please do hard work hard work never failures okay nothing is impossible except change okay sir when can you expect that sir interview questions which i shared with you today uh, tomorrow um, that may be tomorrow most probably tomorrow all either right. morning or evening all right sir yeah thank you thanks you're welcome so that's all for today guys do you have any questions for today class it is very very valuable session guys okay so do you have any questions sir no okay okay guys thank you so very much and good night see you tomorrow thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much